Hello, welcome to these episodes of Math Meowtics. And the following episodes, I'm going to go over specifically over the 2018 star questions. Um, so question number one covers the TEK 7A, which is dealing with volume of spheres. Um, and our first question, it says a fishbowl shaped like a sphere. So that's our keyword is filled with water. The fishbowl has a diameter of 16. D is equal to 16 and it has measurement. What is the measurement closest to the volume of water in the fishbowl? Well, volume for a sphere is equal to four thirds pi R cubed. And again, that is on our star reference material. I'm not going to go scroll over and look at it because that going to be a pain in the butt. Um, just know that your ref it is in your reference material under volume. Okay, and I need this little handy dandy. I need that. Oops, I hit the wrong button. I meant to hit highlight. I need my um, radius. I'm given my diameter. Well, radius is half the diameter. Half of 16 will give me 8. Then I am quite simply plugging that in. So that becomes 4 thirds pi times 8 to the third power. 8 to the third power, let me look at my calculator. Um, 8 times 8 times 8 will give me 512. So volume is equal to 4 thirds pi times 512. I can take 512 times 4, which will give me 2048, and I can divide that by 3, which will give me uh, 6.82.66, and then I can multiply that by pi, and that will give me volume is equal to 2,144.66, which is our answer choice A. Quite simple, easy, quick, and we are done with question number one. See you in the next one. All right, welcome, students. We're going to go over some problems. Um, I'm going to do number two. It's under TEK 5D. Um, the students in the science class investigated how the speed of sound changes with the air temperature outside. And the data, we're given a scatter plot. And that's the data that they gather. And we want to know, based on the scatter plot, what is the best prediction of the speed when the air temperature will reach 50 degrees Celsius. Well, if I look at my air temperature here, these are going up by increments of, uh, so this is 10, uh, 15, 20. So they're showing us in units of 10. So if I go 40, 45, 50, so 50 should be here. This should be 50. Now I really need to create a line of best fit. So I'm going to go here to my clipboard and I'm going to insert my shape, my line. And we know 50 is going to be right about there. And let's see if this makes, kind of makes her fit. We'd use a, um, we'd use a um, ruler in class. All right. Well, that looks pretty good in terms of drawing my line of best fit. Now let's see what our um, y values are. Okay, we know that we can eliminate um, g and we can eliminate we can eliminate g because that gives us a line right here. All right, and we know that that's that would be like 41. That'd be close to 40 degrees Celsius. That won't be the 50 degrees Celsius because 40 that would be uh, 40 30 355. So that won't be it. And we also know it won't be 350 because for the same reason talk about 350 that's going to give us a temperature of 35 degrees so we're really looking at um uh we're really looking at fi uh, somewhere in the 50 range so if i have my point there and i go over here to the left and go to my y value my y value there is 360 so that is my answer choice h which if you think about that that is our correct answer um 365 would be up here and would probably go past in our line of best fit, that would be about 55 degrees for our line of best fit. All right, there you go. That helps you on that problem. So now let's go to number three. Number three is really easy. Four plumbers have estimated length of radius of cylinder pipes and the estimations made by the plumbers listed below. Um, and then we wanna know which of these lengths in order from greatest to least. This is really easy. All we need to do is convert each of these into decimal form. So, um, 3 divided by 25 will give me um, 0.12, and the square root of 3, whoops, uh, square root of 3 divided by 25, 
Oh no, divide by 11. And let me, hold on a second. That's gonna give me point zero point one five seven, and then nine divided by a hundred. That's gonna give me one two point zero nine, and then pi divided by uh, twenty four. Um, this is gonna give me. Excuse me, I'm having to use my computer calculator. There's a real nice uh, website called Wolf Alpha. And it allows you to use a lot of the special characters. So it's, it's a pretty, pretty handy uh, online calculator tool um, when it works. Right now, my internet seems to be intermittent or something. I don't know. Um, pi is 3.14. Um, 3.14 divided by 24 will give me about uh, 0 0.13. So greatest, the biggest number is this one so that eliminates a and that eliminates c um now the let's look at our second one so we have pi over 24 and 3 uh 25th um the next biggest one if i go from square root of 3 over 11 the next biggest one is going to be 0.13 which will give me pi over 24 which is my answer choice b all right um number four uh, let's talk about, um, all right, so Jerry has a new job and earns a salary of 45000 And this is Jerry. And then Victoria, oops, I should write that the other way. Victoria is in her, has a new job and she's earning 54000 So she's making more money than Jerry. Okay, but each year, Jerry receives 2,500 X, X representing the year. And then Victoria is going to receive only 1,500 per year. And we want to know what equation will be used to find X, the number of years it will take Jerry to earn the same amount as Victoria. So we'd set these equations equal to each other. So um, I'm going to look at see which ones. F is going to be eliminated because it has everything having variables. And G is going to be eliminated because it has the variable with the initial salary. And the initial salary, that's the set amount of 45054 So G is going to be eliminated. Um, H, we have 45000 plus 2500X. Okay, that looks good. And we have, we have the variable with the per year. And we have the 2500 with Jerry's salary. And then we have uh, equal to 54000 which is Victoria's salary, plus the 1500 x which is the yearly. So that looks good. Let's make sure, again, J just has, again, we have variables with one of them, not both of them. So again, J won't work, so our answer is definitely H. Uh, let me see if I can get one more in in this video. Yeah, I can get one more in. Uh, number five is really easy. Uh, Natasha walked from the library, yes, that's my name, to the grocery store and then to her house. Uh, the diagram shows the locations of these three places and the distances from each other. Um, which measurement uh, shows the closest distance from the miles from Natasha's house to the library? Well, so we're talking about this distance from the library to Natasha's house. So it's a straight, it's the straight line. Um, this is a right triangle, so that means that we can use this fun little thing called Pythagorean Theorem. And we are looking for our hypotenuse, which is C squared. So C squared is going to be equal to 1.7 squared plus 0.9 squared. All right, so uh, let's put this in. So um, 1.7 uh, squared is going to give me 2. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Make sure this is doing this right. Plus um, 0.9 squared. That's going to give me c squared is equal to 3.7. So now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. That's going to give me c is equal to the square root of 3.7. Give me 1.9 
miles. So my answer choice is B. All right. Let's see if I can get one more. Uh, I'm going to spend the next start the next video on number six. 